Timothy C. Weingard, The Mosquito, A Human History of Our Deadliest Predator. Enter the captivating world of The Mosquito, A Human History of Our Deadliest Predator, where Timothy C. Weingard reveals the significant impact of this tiny creature on human history. Through a comprehensive analysis, Weingard explores the role of this blood-sucking insect, uncovering its effect on important historical events, from the Greco-Persian Wars to the American Civil War. Discover how the mosquito played a significant role in shaping empires, fueling the transatlantic slave trade, and even impacting the rise of Christianity. The book delves into humanity's long-standing war against malaria, tracing the various defenses we have developed over the years to combat this deadly disease. The Deadly Mosquito The female mosquito is the villain that transmits diseases to humans by biting and depositing eggs in stagnant water. Mosquitoes thrive in warm and wet climates, making them ideal disease carriers. They are responsible for at least 15 diseases, with malaria being the deadliest. Malaria, which began affecting our pre-human ancestors 6 to 8 million years ago, causes severe fevers, seizures, and comas that can lead to up to 50% death rates. The parasite that causes malaria mutates multiple times during its reproductive cycle, making it hard to develop an effective vaccine. Despite this, Humans have been fighting against malaria for thousands of years in a continuous battle. Malaria's Impact on Human Evolution Malaria has shaped human evolution by forcing genetic mutation to occur in populations living in malaria-infested areas. One of the most well-known mutations is sickle cell trait that originated among the Bantu-speaking people of West Central Africa who developed a resistance to malaria. The genetic mutation caused the hemoglobin in their blood to take on a sickle shape, making it hard for the malaria parasite to attach itself. They developed up to 90% immunity to malaria but an average lifespan of only 23 years. However, the mutation was passed down to offspring, who were more likely to survive and reproduce. The Bantu's immunity against malaria gave them an advantage when spreading south and east across Africa to encounter groups of malaria-ridden hunter-gatherers. This immunity helped develop dominant inland societies like those of the Kosa, Shona, and Zulu. When the Dutch and British colonized southern Africa in 1652 CE, they encountered powerful tribes like the Kosa and Zulu who were resistant to malaria. Malaria's impact on human evolution is both fascinating and sheds light on how genetic mutation can be a response to disease and play a significant role in human history. The Role of Mosquitoes in Ancient Battles In 5th century BCE, Greece and the Persian Empire were vying for control over the Mediterranean. The Greek civilization faced a challenge as the Persian Empire invaded, outnumbering them heavily. However, the invading Persians faced a major setback in the form of the mosquito. Malaria and dysentery spawned from mosquito bites killed up to 40% of the Persian forces, which made them weak for the climactic Battle of Plataea in 479 BCE. The Greeks then emerged victorious, ending the Persian invasion of Greece. The mosquito played a significant role again in the Peloponnesian Wars of 460 to 404 BCE. Athens was hit with a deadly plague as it was right on the verge of defeating Sparta in 430 BCE. The cause of the plague was malaria or a similar mosquito-borne disease. Additionally, Athens' two-year siege of Syracuse was unsuccessful as the mosquito took the lives of 70% of Athens' soldiers, making them unfit for combat or life. Syracuse remained an ally of Sparta, and Athens eventually surrendered to Sparta hollowly. Mosquitoes and the Fall of Alexander The Devastating Effects of Malaria Outbreak on Alexander the Great's Conquest After winning the Peloponnesian War, much of southern Greece lay in ruins, affected by endemic malaria that weakened Greece's population and economy. Macedon, the relatively unscathed kingdom led by Alexander the Great, took advantage of the power vacuum and proceeded to conquer most of Greece through war and diplomacy. Alexander went further to destroy the Persian Empire and other Central Asiatic regions, including Egypt, Jordan, and Palestine. 
Nevertheless, his conquest was hampered when his army met the Mosquito in the Indus River Valley during his planned invasion of India and Pakistan. Despite the army already stretched thin by years of fighting and an increasing reliance on mercenaries, they could not withstand the malaria outbreaks that ravaged through their ranks. They had to retreat back to their empire's territory, which resulted in Alexander's sudden death at only 32 years old, from an illness most likely caused by malaria. His planned invasion of the Far East, which would have connected the East and West for the first time, failed, and his empire began to decline as his generals fought against each other. This section of history revealed how the tiny mosquito had shaped the fate of Alexander the Great's empire. The mosquito caused malaria outbreaks that weakened his army, and ultimately contributed to the fall of his empire. Malaria and the Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire The Pontine Marshes, surrounding Rome, were home to malaria, a disease-carrying mosquito. However, this mosquito proved to be a great ally for the Romans in defending their territory against invaders. Between 390 BCE and 429 CE, the Gauls, the Carthaginians, the Visigoths, the Huns, and the Vandals were all beaten back by malaria. The mosquito was so effective that the Roman Empire might have never arisen had it not been for its help. However, the Roman Empire's ambitions to expand eastward were thwarted by malaria-infested marshlands, leading to their defeat by Germanic tribes. These same tribes would later play a role in the downfall of the Roman Empire, as epidemics caused by a mixture of plagues and malaria became too much for the empire to bear. In summary, while the mosquito did not solely cause the downfall of the Roman Empire, it undoubtedly played a significant role in both the empire's rise and fall. The link between Christianity and malaria The Roman Empire's spread connected Europe through trade, conquest, and also through disease and Christian teachings. As Christianity gained popularity, the religion presented itself as a healing practice. The early Christians tended to the sick, and this practice made Christianity very appealing, as Europe was hit by multiple epidemics in the 3rd century CE. Eventually, it became the official religion of the Roman Empire, and Christendom and Europe became almost synonymous. During the Crusades, European armies suffered defeat due to malaria, which was endemic to the wet, low-lying coastal areas of the Levant, where the Crusaders tended to assemble. Almost 35% of the Christian soldiers died from malaria in the nearly two-year siege of the coastal city of Acre from 1189 to 1191. Malaria eventually thwarted the Christian army's ambition of conquering Jerusalem, and the Levant remained independent of European control until World War I. The Mosquito's Role in European Colonization In 1492, Europeans accidentally introduced disease-ridden mosquitoes to the Americas, decimating the indigenous population by up to 95%. Mosquito-borne diseases acted as a powerful vanguard for European invaders, allowing them to conquer civilizations with astonishingly few soldiers. Europeans unwittingly displaced or infected native mosquitoes with their pathogens, and diseases rapidly spread inland thanks to indigenous trading networks. This catastrophic event demonstrates the significant impact that seemingly small mistakes can have on history. The Mosquito's Role in the European Colonization Enslaved Africans became a more dependable labor source for Europeans than indigenous people and European servants due to their genetic immunity to malaria. The Mosquito also played a significant role in the revolutionary wars that ended colonization in the Americas. Its ability to transmit diseases killed or incapacitated large percentages of the armies of European empires during the wars, including 55,000 out of 65,000 French soldiers in Haiti. Although the American Civil War that ended enslavement in the U.S. was still decades away, the Mosquito still played a crucial role in the end of the deplorable institution it helped establish. The Mosquito's Impact on the American Civil War the American Civil War began with the Confederacy being significantly weaker than the Union in almost every aspect. President Abraham Lincoln just wanted a quick resolution to the conflict. However, the Mosquito helped to change that. After defeats at Richmond and Vicksburg due to mosquito-borne illnesses, Lincoln had to change his plans to eradicate the Confederate military, subjugate the South and abolish slavery. 
Although a moral component was behind the abolition of slavery, there was also a pragmatic military rationale. Lincoln hoped freed enslaved people would disrupt the South's economy and war effort and bring their immunity to malaria with them. 40,000 African American soldiers died fighting for their freedom in the Union Army, and of that, 75% of them perished from illness. The Mosquito's Role in U.S. Expansion Discover how mosquitoes played a significant role in helping the U.S. win the Spanish-American War, leading to its emergence as a global power. In the aftermath of the American Civil War, the U.S. sought to expand its power globally. Cuba became a target of interest, with five U.S. presidents attempting to buy the island to no avail. Still, American corporations invested heavily in Cuba, resulting in the U.S. purchasing 83% of its exports by 1877. Simultaneously, Afro-Cuban slaves rebelled against the Spanish rule, leading to a full-scale revolt in 1895. In response, Spain sent around 200,000 soldiers to the island, but they were decimated by malaria and yellow fever. In April 1898, the U.S. intervened, declaring war on Spain to protect its corporations and investments on the island. By this time, 75% of the Spanish soldiers had been killed or incapacitated by mosquito-borne diseases, making it easy for the U.S. to defeat them with only 23,000 troops. In just four months, Spain surrendered, and Cuba became a U.S. dependency until 1902 when it became formally independent under a U.S. puppet government. Thanks to the Mosquito, the U.S. emerged as a global power by gaining Cuba and Puerto Rico and acquired Guam and the Philippines from Spain. The U.S. also annexed Hawaii, setting the stage for its emergence as a burgeoning Pacific power and its eventual collision with Japan in World War II. However, the Mosquito's role doesn't end there. The mosquito-driven twist of history forever changed humankind's conflict with the insect itself. The Defeat of Mosquito-Borne Diseases in Cuba After the Spanish-American War, the U.S. didn't risk annexing Cuba due to the mosquito-borne diseases that had already killed 4,700 of its servicemen. Instead, the U.S. Army established the Yellow Fever Commission, which found that mosquitoes were responsible for yellow fever. Dr. William Gorgas and his team then launched a full-out war against the mosquito by draining swamps, limiting stagnant water, and using mosquito nets and chemical agents. By 1902, they had eradicated yellow fever from Havana and, by 1908, the entire island of Cuba was free from the disease. Dr. Gorgas, the Mosquito Terminator Dr. Gorgas was a renowned name in the mosquito-fighting realm. After achieving great success in Cuba with his tactics to combat mosquito-borne diseases, he was redeployed to Panama to oversee the construction of the Panama Canal. His efforts led to the complete elimination of yellow fever and a significant drop in malaria among canal workers. This breakthrough not only represented a historic victory against humankind's worst enemy but also gave the U.S. an advantage as a global superpower. Thanks to the work of Dr. Gorgas and other scientists, Western militaries became much more effective in dealing with mosquito-borne diseases during World War I and II. This research also led to the discovery of synthetic anti-malarial drugs and DDT as an insecticide, which we will delve into in the next part of the story. DDT, A Rise and Fall In 1939, DDT's potential as an insecticide was discovered, leading to its widespread use in Western governments, militaries, and farmers, leading to a drastic decrease in mosquito-borne diseases. However, by the 1960s, populations of mosquitoes developed resistance to DDT, and the chemical was discovered to have negative environmental effects. The combination of DDT's loss of effectiveness and the cessation of its use led to an international resurgence of mosquito-borne diseases, plaguing humanity to this day. The Race to End Malaria Malaria cases have surged in impoverished parts of the world, with sub-Saharan Africa most affected. Pharmaceutical companies have spent little on research due to the lack of profit, leaving the task to non-profit organizations like the Gates Foundation. The Muscarix vaccine only showed short-term results. While 2 million people die from malaria every year, scientists are now exploring CRISPR technology to genetically engineer mosquitoes. 
They aim to render them incapable of spreading the disease or go extinct in a few generations. While creating mosquito-free regions might seem like a solution, it could have unintended consequences for the ecosystems. The stakes are high, and the outcome depends on humanity's choices. Having traversed centuries of human history alongside the mosquito, Weingart offers a clear understanding of how this seemingly insignificant insect has drastically influenced our world. With the advent of modern genetic engineering technology, we are now faced with the possibility to alter the mosquito's biological makeup, potentially putting an end to its disease-spreading capabilities. Though this prospect is tantalizing, the mosquito serves as a cautionary reminder that we must consider the potential ecological and ethical consequences of such a drastic act. Ultimately, this provocative book urges us to question our current understanding of the world, as well as our potential role in shaping it.